Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good, and we love him. Why, pal? Because he first loved us. Praise God, for this is today that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. And guys, how have your day been out there today? Pam, how have your day been? It's been busy, but good. How about yours? Amen. Busy and good. Praise God. God is awesome God. He's a loving God. Amen. Glory to God. Like you say, we love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. Everything that we do, guys, being in Christ should be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So that should be a practice. Amen. That's the practice. Amen. Amen. To glorify God. Be in the goodness of God. To glorify God. Got to glorify God. You can't do that without God's spirit. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You can't do it without God's Son. You can't go to the Father except you go through the Son. And you can't do it without God because you cannot go to the Son unless God sends you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. He's a holy God. Yes, he is. And guys, so we are still talking about, guess what? For judgment, part four. Okay? So uh, about how judgment comes into the world and how it differs from being judgmental. Amen. So, here we go. Hey, I want to give two observations that God does exist. And firstly, but now that Jesus came into the world, that man is now without excuse to not have been Delivered from his own sins, been revealed to us by the law. By what, pal? By the law. Amen. If you can read for us Romans 7 and 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law hath said Thou should not covet. Amen. So there you go. That's the first reason is because of the law. The law allow us to know that we need a savior. And we would not know our sins except God reveal what those things are to us. That's reason number one. Secondly, Pam, if you can read for us Romans 1.20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There you go. So that they are without excuse. What? The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Amen. The invisible things. Is the air invisible? Yes. But we feel it. When watching a movie, does it appear to your spirit? Yes. If you go watch a kung, kung fu flick, a karate picture, you feel like doing karate. If you watch a sad picture, you feel like you're sad. If you watch a, a, a picture that um, moves you in a tearful way, you cry. If you watch a picture that moves you in a happy way, you are happy. Um, do we know the past and present and not know the future? Yes, we know the present. We know the past, but we know nothing about the future. But we know the present and the past. Do we believe there will be a tomorrow even when it is not yet here? Yes. Why? Because we know the present and we know the past. So therefore, we expect to know what the future will bring when it becomes our present and when it's now in the past. Amen? So, do we exist? And if you say because of the Big Bang, 
then who created its elements? So no matter what you say, it always got to go back to God who initiates all things. For God came, we don't know where he come from, but he stepped up on nothing and he made everything he made by the word, his word. Amen. Amen. For in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was what, Pam? God. The word was God. Amen. Praise God. And yes, so nothing was made except it was made by the word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld its glory, the glory of the only begotten, the son of God, full of truth. Amen. Amen. Grace and truth. Amen. And so when the word was made flesh and came into the world, then what, where does that take us? It take us to John chapter nine, verse 39, when it says, and Jesus said for, for judgment, I am come into this world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind. Amen. Amen. So in other words, those who are in sin, they're looking for the Savior. Where is he at? They want to see him. They want to know him. Amen. They want to be saved. Amen. They want, they want uh, 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 their sins to be forgiven. And then there's those that don't look for repentance. They don't look for salvation. They don't look for forgiveness because they think that they are already there. Amen. Mm -hmm. So those, his eye, he will close their eyes because why? The truth is the truth no matter what we want our truth to be. It doesn't change God's truth. Amen. Amen. And so because he come and when he brought, when he came, he brought judgment into the world because of that. We can believe what we want to believe, but it means nothing if it does not line up with the word of God. Amen. Amen. You can believe what you want to believe. Your truth could be just as false as whatever it is. And it does not make it true because you can't make what's true a lie. You can't make a lie to be what is true true. Amen. So God came into the world. He brought judgment into the world when he came in to the world. The wages of sin is what, pal? Death. And the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Amen. You can't change that. You will not change that. No matter what, we cannot change that. Amen. Because that's God's truth. That's his truth. We can title things. We can reason things. We can make the immoral moral. We can make wrong things right and the right things wrong. But it does not change who God is. God's truth will prevail. Amen. Prevail. No, no matter what. Glory to God. His truth. He say. Every knee shall what, pal? Shall bow. And every tongue shall what? Confess. That Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. So it's nothing we can do to change that. Amen. It's nothing we can do to change that. Praise God. So there you are. Two observations that God does exist. He put his law in our hearts. He even gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And <coughs> for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Amen. Amen. So, hey, helping God's work. Helping God's work. God did not have to use us as an instrument, pal. To help him draw us unto him. But he chosen to do that. Amen? Amen. 
He chose him to do that. To do that. He called us to the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To what? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen. What does that make us? It makes us to be ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. That's what it makes us to be ambassadors of of Christ. We are helpers. Just like when God created Adam, he said it's not good for man to be alone. So he created Adam a help me. Amen. Not somebody to be behind him, but somebody to walk with him as an aid to meet him where he fell short. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I'm going to say vice versa. I'm going to say vice versa, amen? But there you go. So God, with his agape love, allow us to meet him, to walk alongside with him. But God is so large that we don't see our footprints because it is God who initiate all things. Therefore, he, he's carrying us. He, carry, he carries us. Amen. But he'll allow us to walk alongside with him. We can have a conversation with him. We can talk to him. Amen. We can love him. We can become upset with him. And he will still love us and allow us to walk with him. We can even change his mind in certain things. If it's according to his will, what is his will? Love, L-O-V-E. If love is involved in things, yes, we can change God's mind about certain things. As long as we are operating in the principles of God. To love the Lord Almighty with all our heart, might, soul, and strength. Glory to God. He's an awesome God. That's how awesome he is, pal. Amen. Praise God. He's a good God. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. So, now, David, talking about helping God's work. David showed us how sin begets sin. Yet, David showed us what true repentance is and unlike the Pharisees. But sin leads to more sin, no matter whose sin it is. David had plotted adultery committed adultery, lied, and tried to conceal what he did, used trickery to mislead, and had a man killed to cover the tracks of his sin. Later, David understood that he was blind now that his eyes had been opened. Jesus come so that our blind eyes can be open so that we can receive what? Repentance. But when it was made obvious to David, then he would repent from the instance of sin and not do it again. Now I say the instant of sin, that sin, because we are not perfect. But when David repented from something, 
He didn't do it again. David was just that kind of a person. All of us don't have the strength of David. But how many times do God forgive us? Peter said, how many times should I forgive my brethren? Seven times seven? Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. In other words, as many times as it takes that our God pay love. Love can change God's mind. Because of love, Jesus came and died for your sins and my sins to change God's mind. He sent his son, his only begotten son, to die for us because he loved his creation. That's the kind of God we serve. He gives us choices. That's why Jesus came to bring judgment into the world so that we can choose between him and not of him. David knew how to move on from one point to the next point while walking with God. David did not linger in his sins, but the Pharisees sinned openly and would not repent. Jesus did not come into the world. Now, listen to this. He did not come into the world to be judged. So we must be careful not to mistake that John 9.39 is saying that Jesus come into the world to be judged. That's not what it that's 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 not what is is saying. Praise God. That's not what the Lord is saying. That's not what the word at John chapter 9 verse 39 when we read and Jesus said for judgment, I am come into this world. But he explains what he mean. That they would see, not might see. And that they would see, might be made blind. He didn't come into this world to be judged. And he didn't come into this world to judge. Okay? He didn't come into this world to judge. And he didn't come into this world to be judged by man. So we must be careful when we are reading that. Okay. It could be taken into the context by mistake. We're not being prayerful. We got to be prayerful when reading the word of God. You always invite the Holy Spirit to join you in your studies. Amen. 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 In your readings. Amen. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit brings clarity mm -hmm. to us. How many times have I read, well, I could probably ask you this, this pal, but there are times when I'm reading and I read something. I say, that don't sound right. And I go back and read it again. And it was definitely something different than what I thought it was when I read it the first time. Because Satan can twist words and it's not the word of God. This is a, the living word. But he played tricks with your mind. That's one of his works is that he tries to deceive the word of God and put his own words into it. That's, that's what he did with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Amen. He takes God's word and he twists it. He twists it. And he will literally twist the word of God that you're reading right before your very eyes. But the Holy Spirit will say, wait a minute, that don't sound right. Go back and read that again. Amen. He will take what you're looking at and make it seem like you're looking at something else if you're not careful. If you're not prayerfully reading God's word. You must prayerfully read the word of God. Now, why? Because Jesus, and we're talking about Jesus did not come into the world to be judged. Why? It's because Jesus is without sin 
and cannot be judged by man who is counted to be worthy by God. You cannot be judged by man. Fivefold ministry, people, pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, glory to God, cannot be judged by man. Now, man call himself judging all of the time. But it takes God to correct his own. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we being of God, we have a position in God to be able to correct each other because we are of God. But somebody who's not of God cannot correct a man of God, a woman of God. And sometimes we are not in a position to be able to correct one and another. But when we do, we should do it carefully. We should do it to make sure that we don't fall into that same whatever it is that's happening. Amen? God is awesome, God. So, now, so Jesus is without sin and cannot be judged by man who is counted to be worthy by God. Pam, if you can read for us 2 Corinthians, please, chapter 5, verse 21, please. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. And I'm going, that was the King James, right? I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. It says, For God took the sinless Christ and poured into him our sins. Then in his chains, he poured good God's goodness into us God for as change of our sins agape love for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him in Christ amen amen Jesus took away our sins. How can you judge him? Jesus said, don't you know I have the power to put you to death? Jesus said, you don't have power to put me to death. He said, I'm here not because of you. Jesus allowed himself to be in the situation that he was in so that he can be positioned to do what he came to do. To die on the cross for your sin and my sins. And that's plural. Glory to God. Pam, if you can read for us 1 John, please, chapter 2, verse 2. 1 John 2 and 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He not only died for the sins of the Jews, but he also died for the sins of the Gentiles. The sins of the world. Whoever so will come to him. who came to him before us during our time and those that will come after us. Praise God. I'm going to read that the living Bible. He is the one who took God's wealth against our sins upon himself and brought us into fellowship with God. And he is the forgiveness for our sins and not only ours, the Jews, because this was the Jews speaking to the other Jews at that particular time, but 
all the worlds, the Gentiles, first unto the Jews and then unto the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Like Jesus in the sense of bringing judgment into the world, we bring each other into judgment by sharing the things that are of God, by correcting each other just as the prophet had corrected David. Amen. The prophet had corrected David. Glory to God. Nathan. The prophet Nathan had revealed to David that his eyes were closed and not open. David was caught up in sin, but when it was made obvious to him, then he would repent from that instant of sin and not do it again. Glory to God. Amen. Now, so we all have our part in helping the ministry of reconciliation, preparing each other and even ourselves for judgment. We got to give an account for what we do being in Christ. Amen. Amen. And they got to give an account for being who they are, not being in Christ. Again, the raises of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin brought physical death on us. Adam was mortal and then he became, he was immortal, and then he became mortal, amen? Because of sin. But the wages of sin is second death, that death, to be eternally separated from God, the resurrection unto condemnation. The wages of sin, that's what that is. They shall be thrown into the, the, the fire, the lake of fire and brimstone forever to be without God forever to be in darkness forever to be blind from the rays of God. So we help prepare each other and ourselves for judgment, meaning that we have a choice now to choose what our actions are through the eyes of God, to choose what we will be held accountable, accountable for, even to choose to repent or not to repent. God does not tempt. Pam, can you read for us James chapter 1, verses 13, 14, 15, please? Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bring a forth death. There you go. We go into our sins openly. Those of us who have been walking in Christ for a while now know what is of God and what is not of God. We choose to fall into our own temptations because God does not tempt us, but God does test us. Many of us walk into sin willingly. We can choose the things that are of God or not of God. Then we act on what we made our minds up to do. If we choose yes, then our actions are to do it. If we choose not, then our actions are not to do it. We should resist temptation 
and we should endure inflictions. When we submit to our temptation, we hinder spiritual growth. When we endure inflictions, we grow spiritually. <coughs> Praise God. He's an awesome God. So we now have a choice to serve the Lord or not because Jesus said, for judgment I come into the world. Guys, read Luke chapter 10, verses 21, 22, 23, and 24. Luke chapter 10, verses 21, 22, 23, 24. Join us next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show, where our favorite lot of the B is, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so, so beautiful. beautiful. God bless you. God bless. Be good. Be good. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.